I'm joined today by Colin McCullough, who is going to be doing a series of three cooking demonstrations for the Thomas Crane Public Library, happening on three subsequent Thursdays, starting on May 21st. Uh, we're going to be talking about smoothies on the 21st, sauces and dressings on the 28th, and delicious and healthy desserts on June 4th. I hope you enjoy our conversation from his and my kitchens to you wherever you are. It's a pleasure to bring Colin. He's an old friend of mine, uh, and I think you're going to have a wonderful time uh, hearing him talk about this program, and I hope you'll join us for the cooking demonstrations. Colin, thanks so much for taking some time to talk to me today. I really appreciate it. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to bring you in your kitchen uh, to connect with the people in Quincy. Uh, I know that you were telling me that you don't have a huge industrial kitchen, but I, I think that's totally all right. You're in your kitchen right now. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of fun. Like, that's awesome. And you've been doing a lot of cooking these days? I have. Yeah. 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 I, I teach a lot of uh, class cooking classes at libraries, and it's funny because, you know, I always bring my blender and my food processor and you know I bring my kitchen to wherever I'm going to be teaching for uh you know for an hour or two but uh you know these days we're at home so you get to come to my kitchen I am so happy to be in your kitchen and you're actually in a new kitchen you just moved into this kitchen a few weeks ago so I did it's super yeah. exciting I'm so yeah. happy for you that's great thank you so we're going to be doing three classes together that people can can come and enjoy. We're going to yes. talk about uh, we're going to talk about sauces and dressings. We're going to talk about smoothies. I think we're going to be talking about smoothies first, then sauces and dressings, and then we're going to finish with desserts, uh, which is right. always exciting. Um, how did you get interested in doing actually and teaching people how to cook? Uh, well, I've been vegan for about twenty five years, uh, so you know it's it's. It's one thing for me to try and eat healthy, but, you know, I have two boys who are now, believe it or not, 17 and 20. And, uh, you know, I remember that when they were so little, that's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Trying to get them to eat healthy food, you know, that's, it's been more of a challenge. So anytime that I've been able to, you know, make recipes where, uh, you know, I use a lot of healthy whole food ingredients and they ask for seconds and I say, yes. Okay. So save, save those recipes. Uh, so actually, uh, you know, I've been, I started teaching classes and, uh, there was a lot of, uh, I got a lot of great reception from that. You know, a lot of people had a lot of questions. Um, you know, I ended up writing, uh, a cookbook, uh, the healthy vegan cookbook, uh, because of all of the, uh, classes that I've been teaching at libraries and, you know, I'll usually teach three or four recipes per class. Uh, whereas, you know, the book has got everything in it already, but, um, you know, these classes that we're going to be doing through the library, um, we're going to be doing the breakfast smoothies that taste like dessert. So, you know, I usually like to have uh, bre uh, smoothies for breakfast in the morning. You know, great way to start out with a bunch of fruit. Uh, you know, I put in uh, some, some nuts, uh, you know, uh, some seeds, some different things in there. But, you know, I've always tried to write my smoothie recipes specifically to try and taste like a dessert. Uh, so like the Black Forest smoothie is one that I have a lot, chocolate and cherry. Great, great combination. Delicious. Uh, it's, it is delicious, and it's also super healthy. It doesn't sound like it, but it's mm -hmm. super healthy. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll be doing that as one of them. Uh, we're going to be doing a class on sauces. And so, you know, this is a, a great class to do, you know, at this time where, you know, we're kind of rummaging through our pantries and, you know, trying to find, you know, we find the the – can of beans that's been in there for a year or two and you know never really knew what to do with that doesn't matter we make uh, some really good sauces you can put it over all that stuff and you know the main thing you're going to be tasting is the sauce so you know you dig out all the healthy stuff throw it in there put a really good sauce on it that's how i get my kids to uh, eat a lot of healthy food is having a really good sauce so we'll do that it's all about the sauce yeah you can have some you can even take some ingredients that are a little bit past their their, their sell by date put them a good sauce and people are none the wiser it's, it's a definitely sure. a good chef's trick there yeah 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 and then we'll be doing a, a healthy desserts class um, this is one of the more popular classes that i do teaching at libraries uh, using whole food healthy uh, healthy ingredients 
but, you know, trying to make them, I don't really do, um, you know, like the alternative healthy version of like Toll House cookies because... We're not going to just do even care of everything. Tell me we're not, oh, no, it's no, not no. care based. Good. No, no. No, <laughs> I remember no I grew carob. up with people who tried to tell me care was the same as chocolate. And I like care but it is not the same as chocolate. Oh, no, no. No, care is banned from my kitchen, so... Banned? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> No, so uh, we'll, we'll do some different uh, healthy whole food ingredients to use your food processor. I always tell people, you know, in my classes, I am a very lazy cook. So if I can get, you know, if I can get the number of ingredients together, put it in the blender, let the blender do the work, you know, let the food processor do the work. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's what we'll be going over. Well, I am super excited. I think this is going to be stuff that whether, you know, those of us who are vegan will certainly appreciate. But one of the great things about cooking this kind of food, besides the fact that it's healthy, is that it's something that you can share with all the members of your family. And when we can share with other people, it's something that everybody can enjoy. Um, oh, sure. So yep. I, I think that you def certainly don't have to be vegan to appreciate and enjoy this food because it's still no. delicious food. No, actually, most of the library classes that I teach, uh, most people are not vegan or vegetarian. Hmm. They just want some healthy recipes uh, for their families. So, you know, if, if that's what I can do to contribute, then that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So you said that you became vegan 25 years ago. Is that really when you started cooking or when did you start uh, developing your love of cooking? Uh, my mom won't appreciate this, but um, I'll, I'll, she's probably not going to see this. So I'll tell you, <laughs> um, you know, when I was in high school, then, uh, you know, when my parents were working and, uh, I come home from school and uh, always with quite an appetite. So I kind of started to learn how to cook that way just because I got home and I wanted to make lots of food. And Something then, other than a bowl of cereal, huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I started learning more cooking techniques that way. And, uh, you know, my mom really didn't appreciate it because, you know, sometimes what was for dinner that night, I would come home and make it and eat it all myself. And so. Oh, would, dear the cause of, of great grief. Mm -hmm. But uh, once I became vegetarian and then I became vegan uh, shortly afterwards, then, you know, 25 years ago, there just, there weren't the convenience foods, the restaurants didn't have, you know, vegan options. So, you know, I, I realized by necessity. Yeah. yeah. If I was, and I, you know, definitely 25 years ago did not have any kind of a uh, uh, budget, uh, fit for eating out if I could have. So, uh, you know, I, I really needed to, to learn how to do it on my own and, uh, uh, you know, kind of developed a, a specific kind of, of way of eating, you know, not just vegan, but I typically don't really use much oil. Uh, I don't use any sugar. I use very, uh, very little salt. So, uh, you know, taking those things away, but still making it really rich and sweet and taste you know, really great, then that's, that's been a, a challenge to, you know, be able to modify recipes that I'm used to making and still, you know, keep it really healthy. So, yeah. Well, I've, I've tasted your food before and it's awesome. So I, I'm really <laughs> excited to be able to share this with a bunch of folks. Are there any Thank ingredients you. that you're having a hard time finding these days? I know that like we've been trying to go to the store. I had a friend who was able to find a flour at Target uh, earlier this week and he's been doing a lot of baking, but I, I was in the store the other day and the, the entire flower section, there was just nothing there. So, right. Uh, right. Are, are you finding everything you're looking for? Is there stuff that you're, you know, is, is a little trickier? Um, for the things that we're going to be doing, um, I haven't had any trouble, you know, finding, finding those things. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, in the age of uh, Amazon and eBay and being able to order the stuff online, um, you know, one thing people ask me a lot is, uh, uh, you know, in the list of ingredients, do you use a lot of specialty stuff? And, yeah. um, you know, in all the classes that I teach, I always say, you know, look, I, I might go to Whole Foods every once in a while to get, you know, specialty ingredients or on Amazon, you know, on eBay, so easy to just order it online. Yeah. You can get specialty stuff. But for the most part, most of the ingredients that I use, um, you would just be able to find at a regular supermarket. And then yeah. if, if there are any specialty ingredients and, you know, I always stop and talk about it, talk about where you can get it. Um, you know, Whole Foods is, I, I don't live too far away from a Whole Foods, so it's, it's easy enough for me to go get it. But, you know, really Amazon, eBay, you know, you can easily order it online, just comes right to your door. Yeah, those online options certainly are a lifesaver. Um, 
we're also blessed in Quincy. We have an awesome, a, a couple of awesome Asian grocery stores, uh, which I found uh, personally have just really opened up the possibilities. Uh, so I think yeah. we're, when we can get out and about and it's safe to do so, there's uh, some great resources out there. So Absolutely. Um, one, one of the last things I'd love to touch on here with, with you is to talk about your philosophy around cooking. Do you think that when people watch your show and they try to do these recipes at home, they have to do everything exactly like you're doing them and they have to have the exact ingredients that you did? Or do you, are, you know, what do you think about interpretation? Uh, yeah. So in the cookbook, the recipes that I developed, I really specifically made them to be as modifiable as possible. So, um, you know, there are a number of people that come to my classes who they are allergic to nuts. They can't have that. Or, you know, uh, I always get a lot of questions about people saying, you know, I'm trying to stay away from this. You know, I don't want to have that. I'm allergic to that. So, you know, in the, in the cookbook, definitely the, and the recipes that we'll be doing, um, in the classes, um, uh, you know, there's, there's actually not that much that you can't substitute if, if you wanted to, you know, just keep the spam out of the smoothies. I think that's always a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> spam smoothies, also kale smoothies. Uh. You don't put kale in smoothies? We've actually had uh. kale and spinach. In the You're not a kale fan, though. So, <laughs> well, you know, I love kale, but, you know, like in steamed in a bowl, you know, dinner or something like that, I'll have kale, you know, all, all night. It's fine. But uh, in a smoothie, it just tastes like liquid lawn to me. So, <laughs> well... <laughs> So noted, so noted. I've actually had had a couple recently. I think it was more spinach that we were doing than kale uh, in the smoothies. But yeah, yeah, yeah. spinach is a uh, spinach is sits in the background and plays nice with everything else a lot better than kale. Kale's a little bit stronger, but you know, I have uh, I have a lot of friends who love the kale smoothies. So not uh, not trying to diss those, but uh, it, it just to to my taste, it's kind of strong. Well, Colin, I'm super excited to have these classes uh, to get to spend uh, a, a few evenings. So we're going to be doing these for three weeks. And uh, I, I, I think everybody's going to have a great time to come join us and, and, and to be able to share your kitchen. So thanks for, for doing this with us. I really appreciate it, Colin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right happy to. Thank you. Right Thanks.